Um, Edgar, congratulations. This movie is amazing. Thank you. So, I could talk to music with you for like three hours. Like, I'm actually like flustered because I saw you tweeted all of your favorite albums the other day. Oh, I was trying to do this thing for an article where I was supposed to come up with 13. And so I wrote down as many as I could, and it was like, oh, this is like 45. And then even the 45, I felt like I hadn't quite covered it. Yeah, like how do you just choose one Beatles album? Well, it's a tricky one. I mean, I could narrow it down to the top three, but it's tough. <laughs> I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be Abbey Road. But it might be the White Album, I'm not sure. It's a very good balance there. Um, well, we're a rock station, so I have to ask you about Flea yes. in the movie. Uh, how did that happen? How did that come about? Um, I wanted to like cast uh, musicians in some of the parts. It's such a music-heavy movie. I thought it'd be great to have some musicians in smaller parts. And I thought about Flea, and then we kind of thought he would be busy. And then um, we have a mutual friend in Nigel Godridge, the producer. And one night, me and my producer, Leo, were sitting opposite Flea at dinner. And we'd just been casting all day. And I'd even like was looking at an actor who looked like a younger version of Flea, and then I leant over to Leo and said, we should just cast Flea. And so we asked him, and he said, oh, I'd love to do it. He had to work out his dates with the band, and then he could do it, and it was great. I mean, he's not only am I a fan of him as a musician, but also he's just a great guy. Oh, that's awesome. No, because they were on tour, the Chili Peppers, correct? Yeah. So he just came to you guys in between? Yeah, I dates? think we managed to work it out dates-wise so he didn't have to miss any dates. Awesome. Any throwback to Point Break in there? Well, Kiedis is in Point Break. Oh, you're right. I think people right. always misremember it that Flea's in Point Break. It's Anthony Kiedis that's in Point Break. Okay. But I think that's quite a nice little link back to Point Break is that just the other two need to be in it now as well. Yes. Chad and Josh. <laughs> Write another movie for them now. Yeah. <laughs> and what other uh, musicians did you have in the film? Big Boy and Killer Mike. Sky Ferrara, John Spencer, and not only is like the first track on the soundtrack, but he also appears in the last scene of the movie. Okay. Um, Paul Williams, uh, who's like a 70s singer-songwriter who wrote the Muppet songs and the score for Bugsy Malone. Um, I think that's it in terms of musicians. I would have done more, to be honest. Okay. Um, so back at home, we play this game called iPuss, and it's pretty much like you're driving down the street, Windows are down, beautiful day, you're cranking up your music, and there's a song that comes on, maybe there's some like pretty girls around you, and there's a song comes on that's so embarrassing, uh, you have to turn it off really quickly. Is there anything in your musical library that you would switch? A genre, an artist, a song? Um, what would be an embarrassing song? Well, the thing is, most of the things that are like guilt, used to be guilty pleasures are all cool now. You can't say ABBA anymore because everybody loves ABBA. Do you True. know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. So I guess it probably would have been back in the day if you were driving along and like Voulez Vous by ABBA was playing. But I don't know if that's it's probably still quite cool. Let me think of something genuinely embarrassing. Um, that's a tricky one. I think all of the things are guilty pleasures. Um, uh, that's a really tricky one. <laughs> I'm going to have to stick with ABBA. Okay, I like it. Maybe just flip on Dancing Queen and everyone will join in. There you go. You can't really go wrong with that one. Nice. Well, congratulations. Amazing movie. Cool. Thank you so much.